I'm scared to go to sleep now. Where's my Applejack plushie? That new intro though. Welcome back to the bomb shelter everyone. Today we're going to talk about the fourth issue of My Little Pony Fiendship is Magic. Over the past couple of issues, the series has given us some insight into the various villains featured in the TV show, essentially giving well overdue backstories to characters that definitely deserve the attention. And this week we continue with a character whose backstory we already know. When you think about it, Nightmare Moon is the villain that we know the most about, at least when you compare it to the other major villains. In the show, we've had decent exposure to what led to Princess Luna's transformation, as well as the battle that led to her banishment. And we learn even more in the Nightmare Rarity arc of the main series. So what else could possibly be explored about Nightmare Moon's character? Hmm, a chronicle of her time on the moon? Okay, I'm somewhat curious. The story was written by Heather Neufer, who also wrote the Nightmare Rarity arc, and we begin the issue immediately after Luna's arrival on the moon. After wandering around for a bit, she comes across a race of creatures called the Nyx, who are responsible for the creation of dreams, and she decided to use their abilities to her advantage. So let's talk about what's good and what's not so good. The first good thing about this comic was that it established where the shadow creatures from the Nightmare Rarity arc originally came from and what they were doing on the moon. On top of that, it also explains the origin of Princess Luna's ability to enter Pony's dreams. Unfortunately, that's where the good stuff ends and makes way for the not so good. This comic had a lot of things that dragged it down. First off, Nightmare Moon doesn't seem to be phased by the fact that she had just been banished to the moon. Like, at all. Oh, I'm stuck on this rock in space for what very well could be an eternity. I wonder if there's anyone that needs ruling. Considering that she had just lost a battle to some pony that she considered to be her greatest rival and is stuck on the moon with no possible way off, you'd think that she'd be at least a little pissed off about that. Another character that didn't seem to be phased by the events going on around them was Doran. It was established early on that Doran was a bit... naive. Nightmare Moon took notice of this and used her to learn how to enter Pony's dreams behind the backs of the other Nicks. But when Nightmare starts to use those abilities to give Ponies bad dreams, Doran still blindly goes along with it. Again, it was established that Doran was naive, but there's a fine line between naivete and stupidity. Even if she wasn't aware of Nightmare's manipulation at first, you'd think that she'd at least have some kind of negative reaction to the chaos that she helped cause, especially when she was seeing it all unfold right in front of her. Which brings me to another problem this comic had. The whole scene where Nightmare Moon tries to take down Celestia. Since Celestia's mind was too strong for Nightmare to go into her dreams, she instead infects the dreams of a regular Canterlot pony and convinces her that Celestia was evil. This pony then alerts all of Canterlot the next day and it sparks a riot, complete with banners of Nightmare Moon's insignia. Celestia then stops the riot by... I don't know, some kind of deus ex machina spell. Apparently it wasn't important. Oh, one more thing? This all happened in one day. So let me get this straight. Nightmare Moon gave one pony a nightmare, and that one pony spread a fear of Celestia throughout the entire city of Canterlot, and that fear started a citywide riot, and Celestia stopped it with some all-powerful spell with no explanation, and this all happened in one day, or in more literal terms, less than two full pages? What? This is another case of characters not reacting to the situations they were in. After Celestia cast her spell, the ponies just went on with their daily lives, and while it is shown that Doran helped to erase their memories of what happened, that wasn't until after Celestia confronted Nightmare Moon in the Dream Dimension. See, the problem with this comic can be summed up with one simple statement. It was trying too hard. The story that they were trying to tell felt really rushed and forced, and the unnecessarily high ambition the story had resulted in the characters not even reacting to what's going on around them for the sake of moving the story along. Think of Sombra and T-Rex stories. We had little to no knowledge about their lives, so the writers had the room to be ambitious because they pretty much had free reign. And while T-Rex story did seem to be too long for one issue and it was chopped off at the very end, the story that we did get was still nicely paced. With Nightmare Moon, however, we already know most of her story, so Nufer only had a small window to work with, that window being Nightmare's time on the moon, but she tried to pack so much into a small gap that the end result leaves us with more questions than answers. The art was also a step down too. After seeing how well Tony Fleeks did with the T-Rex comic, this issue was disappointing on the visual front as well. 
I rarely ever say this about a comic because I usually think that there's at least one person out there that I can recommend an issue to even if I didn't like it. But while this issue tries to explain Luna's dreamwalking abilities and the origin of the moon creatures, it also tried to do so much other stuff and ended up suffering for it. So I have to say that if you're not a completionist, I recommend you skip this comic. One thing I will say is that this is one of those times where the comics being B canon is a relief. Because since what the show says ultimately wins out, they can easily overwrite this. Hell, judging from the amount of confusion this story caused, they probably already have. Well, at least next week we'll get to see Chrysalis, and since that next issue is going to be done by Katie Cook and Andy Price, and they have both said that they are very passionate about her character, I'm looking forward to what this next issue will offer. Plus, it's coming out on my birthday, so maybe that's a sign of good luck. So, what did you think of the fourth issue of Fiendship is Magic? And what did you think of the new intro I put together? Let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Tumblr. And consider supporting me on PayPal through art commissions or donations. Until next time, keep it sketchy folks.